What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and I produce content for homeowners and up-and-coming heating and air technicians teaching you everything you need to know about heating and air. And on today's service call what I'm going to be showing you how to do is how to run and check the defrost cycle of a Train XE1200 heat pump system. So you want to check the heat pump every time you do a, uh, a maintenance call. You want to check the defrost cycle and if you ever run into a service call what the customer says um, that the outside unit's freezing up, you always want to know how to defrost that system. So if you want to see how I do it and how it's done, stay tuned and I'll see you at the heat pump. Alright guys, this is the heat pump that we're working on today and this is a Train XC1200 heat pump. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing defrost cycle on, on this condensing unit. So this is our defrost board here. And you and you see at the bottom here, this is where we test defrost. <clears throat> You've got a little red wire that goes to normal, test, and force defrost. <clears throat> now usually that red wire is in a normal position. That's when it's usually running in just normal operation. But what we want to do is test defrost on this. Now there's two ways. You've got a test pin and you've got a force defrost. Now you could take this red wire loose and you could put it into a force defrost. That will automatically send this system into defrost and that way you can make sure everything's going through. But we, what we want to do is if we're, if we're testing defrost, we want to make sure that the, um, that the defrost sensor is working and everything's going through defrost like normal. So how we'll do this is we want to simulate regular uh, conditions where this thing goes through defrost. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the condenser fan wire and you can see the condenser fan has gone off. Now what this is going to do to test defrost is it's going to bring the coil temperature down enough to activate our defrost sensor and to send this thing through defrost. So what we want to do is we'll get everything cold, we'll go simulate that the defrost sensor closes and that way we can test the whole defrost cycle. So with doing that, you can see our suction pressure starting to go down. And we already see some, some frost on our lines here. So it may take a little while, but um, what we want to do is we want to test all the operations of the defrost cycle. So we're going to wait and let this thing go through defrost normally. As you can see, our suction pressure is still going down, causing our coil to get cold. I don't know if you can see the, the frost that's actually starting on your lines. So we're letting this coil get cold to simulate this heat pump in really cold conditions where it'll need to go through defrost. You can see our lines here still getting colder and frost is starting to, to get on more lines. Our suction pressure is now down to about 25. All right, our suction pressure is going down to about 20 now. It's been approximately like seven minutes. We've been waiting for this thing to go through defrost. As you can see, our lines are getting pretty frosted up. So we're just waiting for that defrost sensor to close and send this through defrost. All right, guys. Our system is now in defrost. We can hook our condenser fan motor wire back. We see our Condenser motor is not running because it is in defrost, and you can see it actually melting all of that frost away. So you see here we got it in the test position. So basically, when you test a system in defrost, you always want to test it in the um, the test position because you want to be able to make sure that your defrost sensor is closing properly, uh, that your outdoor fan motor uh, kicks off and your uh, reversing the valve switches to turn this thing over to defrost. So basically, I'll show you when we do it in the force defrost. That does not test your, your, your defrost sensor. So, uh, so basically by doing it this way, we can always tell that everything's closing, everything's turning off and all that. So, uh, so the system is now in defrost. You can see it melting all the frost. Our pressure on our suction line is going up, so we let everything kick out of defrost and make sure everything kicks off properly. 
You see how it's melting the frost off of here. And you stick your hand up here and you can feel the warm the warm air coming up from where everything is getting warm. So it's warming this coil up pretty good. We're gonna set this back to normal right now while it's going through defrost. And as you can see, our pressure, suction pressure is rising. So in just a few minutes when it kicks back on, our condensing fan motor should kick back on and we should hear our reversing valve switch over to bring this thing back over to heat. So pretty much everything now is um, defrosted. So in just a few minutes the uh, system should come out of defrost. And I don't know if you can see it on camera or if you can see all the steam that's rising out of the top of this condensing unit. And that's normal for a system going through defrost. And I'll tell you, you wouldn't believe the amount of service calls we get that homeowners actually see this, especially when it's really cold outside and they think their unit is on fire. <laughs> We've been to many, many service calls uh, with people thinking that, but it's just normal defrost. All right, we see our condensing fan motor kick back on. And in just a second, our reversing valve will switch, which is right here. We'll wait for it. You just heard it click. And I just heard it switch. And you can see our, our pressures are starting to go back. So our head pressures going back up. Now the difference uh, between the two, the force C frost and the and the test pin. <clears throat> like I say is anytime you're on a maintenance call, you always want to use the test pin because that's the only way you can test your defrost sensor and then check the whole defrost cycle. Now if you've got a service call that, you know, pretty quickly the homeowner says it's not going defrost and you just want to check it, the force defrost is a quick way to check defrost to make sure, you know, is going through defrost or and things like that. So what I'm gonna do, we go we'll go ahead and I know we just turn it over and give it a while usually for it to to, um, to stabilize but I just kind of want to show you so if you want to force this system into defrost really quickly you take this red pin here you pull it off you put it into force defrost and you see as soon as we do that this switch this switches our condenser fan motor turns off and that quickly sends it through defrost so with knowing it's going through test and force defrost we go turn it back into the norm for normal operation, and that way everything can proceed normally. So, guys, this is how you check defrost on a train TWP condensing unit. Not a hard thing to do, but um, I do know a lot of times is if you don't use the test cycle on this, like if a customer has a problem with the system not going through defrost or something like that, that if you're not using the test pin then you can't check the, the defrost thermostat to know if there's a problem with that. If you use the force defrost, it'll send everything to, through very quickly. You can test the motor, you can test the reverse valve making sure, but you always want to check, check everything on defrost. One of the um, main callbacks I find on defrost, especially younger technicians, is if they just check the force defrost, they don't run it through a proper defrost cycle, end up finding out there's a problem with the defrost sensor. It's not closing. It's not sending the system through defrost when it calls for it. So always check that and make sure that that's happening. So guys, I appreciate you watching. If you learned something, hit that like and subscribe button. It means so much to me. As always, I'll see you on the next service call. Bye guys.